Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. We're bringing you a dirty word. Woohoo! NAS, baby! NAS! Non age statements, our top five. Bam! I'm a little fired up! Let's test it. Test it! I ran out! People are gonna be like, I ain't watching that. Jackass. Yeah, they're watching it. They're gonna be like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I needed to shock you. Shock you. Please baby. don't turn it off yet. <laughs> Give us a chance. Let that roll. Keep I rolling. Know, baby. It, yeah, it is. We're yeah. rolling. We're, that's in. Yeah, you didn't know that was coming, did no, you? No, and that was yeah. very I know. annoying. <laughs> if I would turned into that, I'd be like, I ain't watching that. No, thing. you're gonna be like, damn, I gotta see more. I gotta see more. Look at that. I haven't been excited like this in a while. You know why? What are we doing? Top five non-age statement scotches. Oh, now I can say mine are all single malts. Are yours? Well, I don't know what you got. You don't know what I have. Are yours single malts? You got any blends? No blends. Okay. So top five non-age statement single malt scotches. Good. I didn't know. Yeah. I had a ball just just retasting these. Now I poured one of mine. Do you want to pour a little bit of one of yours so you can talk about it? Well, I'll, I'll turn my head and won't look. All right, you turn your head. Actually, we'll pause. And when we say pause, okay, we'll, yeah. we'll clip this out. <laughs> Which is a reference to me not clipping out a pause. <laughs> and I'm not looking to see what you pour. We're back in. I poured a little bit and I was like, what am I thinking? Pour some more in there. Pour some more. Wait till you see what's in there. Yeah, I just poured a little bit and really is because I haven't had this one for a while. And I'm, I'll start. I'm going to start. I'll go with my number five. Yes, your number five. I'm blowing some of the scent. That's what's in my glass is my number five. Woo! Really? My I, number one is in now, here. Now, and I don't know what you have. I'm going to tell you, you're getting a little bit of... I kind of chose cheap. Oh, I can smell it on my hand. Cheap to high end. Oh, God. It goes up. I've got a little bit of everything. i got some good ones. Okay. Number okay. five. Number five. You've kept your secret? I have no idea. You've we seen did this one a while back. Deanston Virgin That's, Oak. That is a great choice. I looked at this. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's great, but it was beaten out by mm. what I will call smoke. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, there really is a lot of great choices out there. There are. Several. Okay, when we first started, four years ago, we started doing reviews, and NAS was really kind of starting to pick up. Right. Well, it was, and you're right. It was kind of a dirty word at the time. Yeah. People were all ready to just like bring out their pitchforks. And yeah, there were and, protesting. Yeah. There was rioting in the streets. Yeah, there was. They yeah. were burning distilleries yeah. down. Oh, stills were being toppled. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Their kids were involved. I remember that 12 year old oh, kid. Remember on CNN yeah. was like, "Let's burn this." Yeah, down. yeah. He was he was spitting on a distillery sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> he had a big chaw in. But it, okay. So anyway, to start with my number five, a $30 bottle of, yeah. of Deanston Virgin Oak, right. non-age statement, 56.3%. It's delicious. The vanillas, um, mm. the caramels, the it, the Virgin Oak means there's been nothing else in this wood. Let me have a sip, just a sip of you it. Because you're right. This was now, on my list. If we had done more than five, this would have made it. And you can see, I, I was, oh. I, I've, I've been saving, since we started talking about doing a non-age statement yeah, show, I've been, save, I've been saving this. The nose on little. this is unbelievably good. It smells like sweet dough rising in your mother's kitchen. Maybe even your grandmother's kitchen. Hmm. Yeah, I just <laughs> smell that. Smell I know. that. It's like That's a sweet a bun. It's like yeah. sweet honey buns. <laughs> Unbelievable. I need to get more of this. As I, I knew when we did a non-age statement, this one would be in there. Mm. Really surprised by it. It's thirty dollars, maybe thirty-five dollars. You can't go wrong with it. Mm. <laughs> it's it's fabulous. Here's one of the underlying themes that's going to run throughout this top five NASs. I currently believe, and I've seen the shift in the discussion. Nobody cares anymore if it's NAS. Well, I wouldn't know. Not, okay, not, some people some, care. But if just, all you care about is that there isn't a number on there, you you are missing the boat because there are some not so good NASs. There are some. I don't know sure. why, but maybe just my palate. 
But I, there are some blow your knickers off. I use knickers. <laughs> All right. Blow yeah. your knickers right off. Great, phenomenal NASs that are quite pricey and sell out. Mm -hmm. That's how you know they're good. Yeah. Yep. So that's my number five, a nice, cheap NAS. Woo. I don't mean cheap. Inexpensive. Inexpensive. There you because go. the nose alone makes me want to go eat cinnamon rolls at, at Grandma's house. <laughs> All right, now this is not what's in there. This is not what's in there. Mm. I've right. got coin 116, by the way. Good, 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 good. I have coin 112. You want, you want me to put my, uh, my bottle down? Yeah, it's okay. good, though. That is good. All right, and here's the dilemma I ran into. Limiting this down to five turned out to be very, very difficult because that could have been in had we gone longer. Mm. My five... We're like in a, it was like a civil war of Marvel heroes battle on who was going to win. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, the Peteds are strong in this house. Mm. This is the Ardbeg Corey Vreck. You're looking right up that peated hole, aren't you? Oh, right in the peat hole. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds dirty. All right. Um, we got a glass hole and a peat hole. That's not what's in here. This is my number one. This is the, I just had a, like a tongue twister. This is the Ardbeg Cory Vrecken tobacco, brown sugar. Uh, I don't have all my notes here, but I literally poured, I got down to, I knew, I knew my number one and where it was going to be. So I poured out multiple other drams. And I wanted to take them head to head against themselves in a foretaste of what I would like to do. Hello, hello, would be a would be a peat shootout. We're not going to talk anymore about this, but I did my own little peat shootout with my and oh my. This is good. It was on my list, then it moved, and then it moved, and then it moved, and then it landed here, and I almost feel like I've cheapened it at just five. It's phenomenal. Corey Vrecken, Ardbeck, Earthy. Um, sweet. Now I remember. I know we did that. Of course, Delicious. that was early on, and I don't want to. I don't want to ruin my taste buds here by drinking it. Mm. You didn't catch. I said ruin. I don't mean ruin. <laughs> Saturate my taste buds with peat. Well, it's so good that it will wreck you for whatever else comes after. I remember that being a very strong because that one's cast strength. It's fifty-seven, mm. fifty-eight percent, fifty-seven point one percent. Now I remember I liked the Oogie Doll better. Another non-age statement, but. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people probably going to agree with you on this one. Yeah. Black hat, black shirt, dark Boba Fett. I picked it for a reason. Hmm. Boba Fett would be a Pete fan. He'd be an Ardbeg fan. Hmm. Maybe even a Freud. My number five. And my goodness, you catch me on a different day, this could be number three. That's could all I'm be, saying. Maybe Phenomenal. number one. Phen no, uh-uh. No, not one. All right. <laughs> I go for one of your bottles here for my number four. Woo! Where Just are you going? No. Where are you going? Look at that! I did taste this now, as well. This is a mashup of our two favorite genres mm -hmm. of scotch, mm -hmm. peat and sherry. It's like an unholy reunion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> unholy. There are some other things I was thinking. I'm not going to say. I'm just thinking, Val you know, the Valkyrie, the Vikings... The, the pillaging, the burning. Mm. That's why I, that's why I mentioned unholy. It seemed brutal. <laughs> Sorry. But no, uh, a nice non-age statement. This is seventy dollars. A new mm -hmm. edition from Highland Park. A great uh, mix of both sherry and peat together. They did a splendid job of mixing the two. I just sipped goodness in my bottle, and it's it's distracted me. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come back. All right, I just got lost in tobacco. Now let me uh, just. This to, is good. A lot so, of people bash on this. We have enjoyed it as what it is from the get go. Um, it was on my radar for this. Just couldn't quite hold up to some of the peat that I brought out. Hmm. Yeah. Foretaste of what's to come. There. Yeah. The. There's a lot of good, and not like we said, a lot of good non-age statements out there. It was really hard to narrow it to five. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of looked at, also, I want to give a range in a price kind of of different oh, things. Oh, I, I ignored that completely. And I started kind of with a $35, moved to a $70, right. 
And you may see a ramp up with mine. All right. What I did look at was I did look at different things, especially things outside the peat family, that I, I agree. If we did a top 10, I think mm -hmm. I think my list would have been a little bit more diverse. <laughs> In the top five, it is not. You. This is a good call. I've got two of these on the shelf. Mm -hmm. There's two. You pull that off, bam. I don't know if you can see it. There's another one right behind it. Mm -hmm. It's I got backup. The Valkyrie has bought, brought backup. That's all I'm saying. I love it. I have two. And one of these was a review bottle mm -hmm. from the distillery. Mm -hmm. I bought a backup. Mm -hmm. You know it's good when you get one for free and you buy another one. Sure. That's all I'm saying. Sure. That's all I'm saying. It's not on my list. Good now, point. I will tell you, maybe a caveat, mm. is that ours, uh, U.S. version, is, I want to say, 46%, 45.9. Okay. okay, just shy. Uh, European releases are lower. Shut up. They're either 40 or 41, maybe 43. That's criminal. And I've noticed some of the reviews uh, from our European friends aren't as friendly as ours, and I don't know if it has to do with the ABV mm. of it. Why would Harlan Park do that? I don't know. Well, there's uh, there's a lot of discrepancies in uh, countries' release ABVs hmm. between us, Canada, and Europe. I mean, there's I know they usually they do 700 milliliters because our laws, uh -huh. it's got to be 750. Yeah. Because Americans got to have more. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know why they would change the ABV. That's surprising yeah. to me. No, there's a lot between, like I say, Canada or United States or, or Euro European markets where they, they release different ABVs. So I know the U.S. release of this at that 45.9% is delicious. It is. Get you some and get you back up. Number four. Number four. Number four. This is where the battle took place. Okay. <laughs> this is the Glen Livet Nadura. This, if you haven't seen the end of pendant review that we did on it. Go look at it. But this is this is the Glenlivet that's put in, it's simply put in a used cask that had peated whiskey in it. And you wouldn't, I didn't think it was, I thought it was kish. I thought it was marketing. I thought, okay, they're trying to claim, you know, peated whiskey cask finish. Come on, what is that? Then I tasted Goodness, beautifulness. Because of that, this is set. You want to let this open up a little bit, though. I will tell you, when I mm -hmm. first went down, I, you can't even get this where we live, so I had to travel to Texas, and I bought two. When I first opened it up, again, it was a little bit, eh. It's back right where yours was, okay? When, yeah. when you let me try yours, and it had been around for six or seven months, it, would, it had opened up. Something happens with this, and it opens up. Um, this is the one that was like in a battle with Corey Vrecken because I would be like, oh, the Corey Vrecken's got this beautiful tobacco. And then I'd be like, my God, this is so peaty, but different. Well, and to me, the Ardbeg Corey Vrecken though is more, it, I mean, it is peat. It's peat up front. It's peat in the mid. It's peat in the finish. Mm. See, I get a little more subtleties than that. Do you with the Corey Vrecken? Yeah. Now see, to me, this one though, this is just, this is not a peated whiskey. This is a whiskey, a scotch from Glenlivet that was put into casks that previously yeah. held peated whiskey. Yes. Surprisingly, though, that peat came across in what I would think would be a slight yeah. peat finish, more medium. Yep. But there's so much citrus and sweetness mm. and stuff in yeah. there with it. You just it's, it. To me, this is more balanced. This is finer. Than the Corey Fred. It's a weird Franken, not weird. It's a wonderful Frankensteinian mixture where I but, feel like I'm getting the Glenlivet, and then I'm like, but it's Pete, and then I'm like, no, it's Pete, 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 and then I'm like, but there's a hint of citrus, and I'm like, oh my god. And the more I went back and forth, because it wasn't just the Corey Vrecken, I actually thought, well, this will probably be fifth maybe it might fall off my list and then it was fifth and then i kept going back and i'm like it's up i mean if you look i'm gonna let you look here look at this mm -hmm. no is, no look hold on i'm list? covering the other ones covering the other ones look at this look how it moved around oh okay i had it on the list and then i renumbered it because i was like my god 
Like, no, I don't want to look. I know, don't look at the other ones, but you've seen how I literally went back post and I was like, I have to change this because I kept sipping and it, this just kept calling me and saying, move me up, move me up. I've got some different things in here that shock and surprise you. You said, I was gonna, you said earlier, you go, this was a weird combination. And then you correct yourself, not weird, I mean, whatever. When you said weird, you meant unexpected. Because mm. when I brought that over and you said, oh, Glenn Livett, oh. it's been in a peated cast. Yeah. Expectations are yeah. low, oh, whatever. whatever. It's not gonna well, be good. Ooh, I've been in a peated aged cast. <laughs> yeah. And then. And I was like, oh, oh. You were I mean, blown I was away. like, oh. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like, mm. And. It I can still smell it. Does it. Is that the Corey? That's not the Corey Breck in your glass. No, this is my number one. You're breathing it on. Yeah, me. this number is my one, number one, and it's hard to focus as I sip it. <laughs> I should not have put my number one in here because I'll be like, how is this even on my list? My list should be this, number one, number two, number three, number four, and five. But we'll come to that later. What this is, is affordable greatness that brings you at $70 six, range. Yeah, $70, 61.5%, and it brings you the Glenlivet with peat. And it doesn't feel like it's just got a peated cask finish. Mm -hmm. um, the peat is so strong, just using a cask that has it in there mm -hmm. imparts the magic. And make sure you use the when you the refer Glenn to Livet. the right. Glenlivet. Right. It's and not it, Glenlivet. It's no, it's the, the Glenlivet. Glenlivet Nadura. All right. And right. it says again, finished in a heavily peated whiskey casks. Yes. And they did it. And it's awesome. I would agree. And I looked at that one and it's I considered phenomenal. my list, but I, I went with a range here price wise mm. and region. Mm. My number three, mm. and I'm threes, plural, but. Okay. Yeah. Glen Goyne cask strength. Sure. Now the plural here is we're seeing a, a range, not range, a variety, a Macallan classic cut, right. Glendronic cask strength, uh, the Abulauer Abunad. Mm. All of these are non-age statement, sherry, cask strength, bombs. They're delicious. This Glen Goyne is $80. Uh, so a notch up from my Highland Park Valkyrie. The McAllen Classic Cut is 90. Your Abelauer Abuna is 90 to 100. All of them in that same price range, the same ABV. We're going to do a shootout with them, mm -hmm. a versus something. We're going to yeah. compare them right. to see which that. one stands out. And then we got to do the peated versus or the peated shootout. This Glen Goyne, though, for the price point. The reason I chose this out of all those, which I'm grouping them in here together, but this one, when I opened it and cracked it, really surprised me. Hmm. I mean, it really jumped. I was like, holy crap, this is good. I want to try this up next to the 15. Oh, that really? The 15 okay, because the 15 impressed me the most um so far but i feel like i need to to do a head-to-head -head. just me but those this are, is good yeah th is good. those are my number threes so mm -hmm. expect a, a shootout of versus a comparison something coming up with those so you're saying all of those are number threes you've almost yes but i chose this one okay. as the face this stood ahead of this is I think the leader so. i think so I think, okay that's good though <laughs> i mean I'm, I'm with you they're a the, even the way they're packaged tells you similar yet different because uh -huh. they use the same like herringbone kind of packaging. Oh, the, gl the Glen Goines, right? Yes. And and on the on the barrel, and so you can tell we're all related. Yeah. Okay. But then they oh, stamp well, this one. Cast right. The bitches. They now so they've got ten year on up. <laughs> I think they've done an eight year release in the past. Yeah. Sure. Okay. But this is the ten year now has a different can. But that, what I'm saying there is that they still put their, the 10-year-old in a can. How many distilleries do you see where the 8 or the 12-year-old isn't in a can, but the 15, 18, 21s are? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, well, that's the 12-year. It doesn't need to be in a can. All of the Glen Goines come in a can. I just got so, distracted. It's the marketing. <sighs> oh, my goodness, <laughs> baby. I should have not put number one in here. Glen oh, Goyne, wait. cask strength. Sherry bombs, non-age statements, try them. All right. If you're not, you're missing out. Now, I, here's what's funny. I didn't want to tell you what was on my list. Uh -huh. Number three breaks from my so far peated extravaganza. 
and I was actually so sure that this was going to be on your list that I thought, let me not tell you to bring it because I know you have it. I do not. And then you, when I told you, hey, do you have X? Mm -hmm. You were like, huh? I was like, shut up. You're like, well, it was on my short list. The Aberlauer Abuna. Set that one back up there. Well, I, I think we should put that back up, right? Just slightly in front. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's neither of these. It's the Aberlauer. Abuna. But it's a sherry cask. It is, it is. So I'll, I'll move that back. Which I included kind of in this non age statement. Okay. But. Range. We had just recently, I think it was during a live show, wasn't it? When, when did we retry it? Was it during it? Yeah, it was a live show. We just did it with a malted man yes. case. Yep. Yes. And uh, you'd re poured some for me, and it is beautiful. It opens up. It's, 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 it's warming, coating, comforting level of, of sherry refinedness is to me really a cut above the others. And, and it lands solidly at my number three. And um, I, again, I, it's funny in my mind, I thought I'm not going to tell you. I was sure, I even thought it, it might be uh, one or two on your list or something mm -hmm. when I thought about it. Mm -hmm. So we'll throw in like a picture or something so you know what now, we're and, talking about. Well, it, we'll wait until the shootout to see, but I can tell you the, Ab the Abunat is good is good. It seems a little lighter than the Glen Goyne does. Okay. And, and I mean, I, I considered all those in this group, which one do I want to represent? Mm. And I mean, the Glen Goyne. I'm excited. Well, for, but I'm that excited one's, for the Sherried shootout. Yeah. We're going to try to do 16 bottles? No. Okay. Uh, no, no. It'll just be, we've only got four or five oh. on hand. I thought we were going to try to do a massive blind one. We're going to have to spend some money if we maybe, do. Maybe we should. It'd be <laughs> worth it. Uh, I'm, I'll I'm tell you, the, really, there's two that I would like to have for sure. That's the Tam Dew cast strength and the Glendronic cast strength. I think we should try to get up. So if we, we can. can't get to 16, we should try to get to 12 or 14. I, I think it would be good. Eight if we can even maybe. Break, break it into where we're doing three. We'll see. Three, six, nine, twelve. When I first started talking about it, I had, I had I four know. in mind. I know. But it's grown. The Glen Goyne, yep. the McAllen, this the This is Abelauer, your wheelhouse. And a Glen Rothis. I think this is your wheelhouse. We, we should respect it. <laughs> and it means we, we will try to do the same you, for the peated later. You know what respect is? Show me the respect, man. My number two. Bam! Wow. LaFroy lore. This was also in my panel of trying. Mm -hmm. Good mm -hmm. call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I knew you'd, go, you'd be down with this one. Yeah, I'm down, baby. <laughs> I'm like breakdancing with it. What, what, with the LaFroy lore. Now, I, when I first had this, I mean, it, just, it was one of those that you sit down with, and, and to me, I was like, GD, that's good. Mm. Gosh okay. darn. Heavily, heavily peated. <laughs> sherry influence has been in a sherry cask for a short spell. Mm -hmm. um, it came through. It's a non-age statement. $120. So we're seeing that ramp up. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't, I mean, uh, like any of these peas, the Ardbeg has several. Lafroig has a few non-age statements. They've all been good. I would say the Lafroig Select has been the most disappointing. I'm probably with you on that. And it's a non-age statement, but it's a lower ABV. It's right at 40% ABV. Yeah. Well, but, this is what the magic of these NASs are. I had been warned away from this. And then you got it. Thank you. And you were like, disregard what you were told. And then you brought it over, and I was like, ah, go a, watch that show. In a rare twist of fate, yeah. Bart didn't listen to advice, and I, I picked it up anyway. In a rare twist and of fate. And I think fate. it sat back there on my shelf when we were doing live streams, and one night I was like, I'll open it. So I think maybe someone suggested open the lore. Mm -hmm. I opened it, and I was like, oh. The Chupacabra's this. offended that I didn't buy this. Yeah. I mean, I'm a Lafroy lover. And I didn't buy this. You know why? The 15-year anniversary edition kind of steered me. Yeah. Steered me a little bit. Eh. That and a couple of guys in our liquor store had said, ah, it's yeah. not that good. And I wasn't real fan of the Karchus. The 2015 or 16 Karchus was I think like, that was later, though. Did we have maybe. that one before I can't that remember. one? Before this one? I can't remember. No, I think what happened was they told you that you didn't buy it. I did. It was sitting there on the shelf. But then you had picked up the Karchus. Mm -hmm. And... 
Carcass was good. It was good. Some of the subtleties of it were lost on us. It's Completely. a Madeira casking. We weren't. Neither one of us was really able to discern a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, you were and lore, yeah, whatever. And I said, oh no, they were wrong. Yeah, you got to try it. It's delicious. Uh, Forty-eight percent ABV on the lore. Mm -hmm. One hundred and twenty dollars. Well worth it. Definitely. Heat and deep in there you got to search for it no you don't have to search for it but just deep underneath that peat is those sherry notes there is that sherry sweet. dark sherry sweetness Again, coming out you may or may not see that and i will talk about it more mm. okay mm. your number two my number two is something i thought you might have brought as well but i think you probably did not i thought my number two would have beat out that one for you. In case you haven't, bring it up. But if not, I'm going to bring up its sibling. I'd had the Ardbeg Cory Vrecken. I thought it was phenomenal early on. Then we did a show where we called it the Family Shootout, where we did the Ardbeg 10, the Ardbeg Cory Vrecken, and the Oogie Doll, which you will have. Not anymore. That's gone. Okay. Yeah, that's been gone for a long time. And the Oogie Doll stood head and shoulders above the Cory Brecken. And I like the Oogie Doll better, and it is my number two. So I'm going to turn this around because it's not the Cory Brecken, but the Ardbeg Oogie Doll, which I don't even have a sample of, I wish I did, is my number two NAS top five. Until we'd had them together, I'd had them individualistically, individualistically, individually. I was saying I liked the Cory Vrecken better, but when we did that little tiny family shootout of mm -hmm. the 10, the Oogie, and the Cory Vrecken, the Oogie stood head and shoulders above. You can go watch the show. You can see what happened. And it is my number two. And I wish I'd bought a couple. I think you can turn it. I don't think they can read the Cory Vrecken gotcha. on there. All right. So it doesn't say Cory Vrecken. It says What Ardbeg is doing with their NASs is phenomenal. Now, I, I will tell you they've got a little bit of an easy button in my frame, especially in my world. Younger peated whiskeys are phenomenal. I don't like some of the 18 year mm. peats that are out there because as they age in the barrel, that peat gets less and less and less. You got the Lagavulin 8, unbelievable. You've got these NASs with the Cory Vreck and the Oogie Doll. Unbelievable. And I, th I think the peat is a little bit of a easy button. So I think some of the ones like the Abu Na and even the Deanston you pulled up, I think it can be a little harder with some of those subtler whiskeys. These are not subtle. No. These are Thor hammerish. Bam. They're clubbing you. And I love it. And I'm in love with all these. When I came back, the NAS idea was yours as a top five topic. And as I experienced it, I was like, I said, like, thank you, Scott, out loud, like five times. I'd taste it, and I'd be like, thank you, Scott. I had not been back to the Corey Brecken in probably a year, and I was like, thank you. Thank you very much. You weren't here, but it happened. Huh, interesting. You're mm -hmm. a genius. Are you ready for our number ones? Yes. Mm. I just sit my number one. Ooh. High end. 200 plus dollar bottle. This was my Christmas bottle a couple years ago. Uh, years ago. The Dalmore King Alexander the Third. Wow. And there's still just a little bit left of it on these days. Ooh, that's a good amount. That's a good amount. Kill that thing off. Because there's no glass hole. There's no <laughs> glass hole. That's right. If there is a glass hole, there wouldn't be as much. This has been um one, let me count them, because I can't even remember if it's five casks or seven different caskings. Mm. Non-age statement from Dalmore, mm -hmm. $200 plus. Uh, whiskey's matured in ex-bourbon casks. Matusalem Oloroso sherry wood. Yeah, sounds Medusa-ish. Madeira barrels. Right. Marsala casks. Like the Masala. Port pipes. Mm. And Cabernet Sauvignon. Love it. So seven different casks. Was that right? Did I count them right? Oh, Bourbon, mm -hmm. Matusalem Oloroso, Two, Madeira, three, Marsala, four, Port, five, Cabernet, six. 
six casts. So I, I, I've been close. I said five or seven. It's six. Yeah, you're right in the middle. It's like a um, scoring system. <laughs> this is one, and it's bought a little bit higher for a Dalmore. I want to say it's, nope, it's 40%. I guess the cigar malt is the only one that's blended a little bit higher. The Dalmore King Alexander, when I first had it, it was a Christmas bottle. It was Christmas Day. We were cooking. Everybody's running around. I opened it, and I thought, yeah. Your uh, house is great on Christmas. I wasted my money. Oh, really? A couple weeks later, sitting around, nighttime, everybody was in bed. I was like, it's time to go back to the King Alexander. Mm. In the silence, where I was able to focus on the whiskey, Good point. is where it shined. Yeah, you've got a wild household on Christmas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of family members so, showing up. Dogs. But no, I was able, I sat down in those different caskings. I mean, you, you're able to pick up so many notes, so many layers to it. It's just, mm. it's delicious. Hmm. You know, I will tell you, um, one of the bottles I factored in was the Dalmore Cigar Malt. Mm. I hadn't really thought of this, but I've been nursing and I probably got like that much left of the cigar malt. And it's gone up in price too. And uh, the well, weird thing about the Dalmore is they have lower ABVs, but they don't taste like it. Some. Some. Mm. Some. Now I will tell you though, this this is this is beat out by the Balvini Ton 1509 Batch 3. Mm. But that one is already gone. I mean, it, it was a limited edition. It's already gone off the shelves. It was 300 to $400. I didn't want to include that one because you can't find it and buy it and try it. Hmm. I wanted to have bottles that you can okay. go find and buy. The Not Dow the Moore, I follow it at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think all of yours hmm. so far. Can you still grab an Oogie doll? Uh-huh. Okay, I yeah. need to go get more. Corey Vrecken, <laughs> uh, Glenn Livett, and a Dura Peated Cast. Yes. Abunad. They're, my, number they're one, my number one is going to be a no. But I, 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 and like I say, I had uh, kind of styles and prices, and I, I ramped up to this high end. And over $200, the Downward King Alexander. I know the Scotch Four Dummies are with me on this one. It's delicious. Hmm. What does Scotch Trooper think? I'm not sure on that. What about Swami? What is Swami? Swami's not a Dalmore fan. Oh. Bubba and the Beard? Bubba don't do... They've done <laughs> but hold on, hold on. That sentence sounded great. Bubba don't do Dalmore. That's what I yeah. thought you were going to say. They don't do... Bubba don't They're do... They're branching out into scotches. They were just bourbons. <laughs> uh, literally, I thought you were going to say Bubba don't do Dalmore. All right. Anything else you want to say? No. Bum, bum, ba -da. Ardbeg. Ardbeg's oh. been running this show. Hand me another glass. What? Hand me your cognac glass. Okay. Do it. I'll do it. I'll pour me a little King Alexander right here. Finish this out. Yeah. Look at that. This should be. Get your a, grubby hands off of it. This should be in a cognac glass. <laughs> That's a fancy dancy glass. I wish I had two of them. That's One got broke. Can you see it right there? It's a Riedel. Yeah, keep it in there. All right. I've been sipping on this. This is the Ardbeg Dark Cove Committee Release. The committee release is a higher ABV at 55%. I've actually sourced a second bottle of this after we had a sample. I sourced this one and then got another one. I was like, I gotta have this. And I noticed that a, the rate, not even the, the committee release, but the regular release you've got. You got three. I've bottles. also got the regular release. We did a little versus in a show between the regular, you know, I wanted to know how much different is it? It's almost, I mean, you can tell they're related, but they're very different. So it, it was worth the money to search out the committee release. Um, the committee release, the first sample I ever had, who who provided the sample? I, I need that to was from Walt out. Triple Cap. Oh, way to go, Triple Cap. Mm. I owe you like a debt of love. <laughs> okay. Because Walt has cost us some money because he was also responsible for the... Uh um, Ardbeg Dark Cove yes, Committee release. Yes, yes. The um, I know. What was the other one? It'll come to you. It'll come to you. Octomore seven oh, six point three. Yeah, we brought back the Octomore from Brook Lottie. All right, so I had this. It's the peated goodness that I love, but it does these multiple transitions, and I get tobacco, and I get uh, I get the tobacco pipe smoke. I, I get so many warm and cuddly and lovely flavors in here. 
and it was an expensive bottle. It was harder to find bottle and I had to have it. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I've got one that I won't open probably until I retire from my main day job. Hmm. And that may be the one. And I nurse on this. I don't come back to it often. I'll be honest with you, I don't share it very often. I'll share my <laughs> Yamasaki 18 quicker than I share this. It's not the price point, it's the, that I love the juice in here. And, and you got one more bottle. And, and I got it, another gone. one. Yeah, I got another one. And, and then it's gone because you can't get any more of these. If there was a fire in my house and the kids were safe, <laughs> I would have a couple board games in this hand. And this and its and its sister bottles of the non-committee release and the unopened committee release would be in my other. And I would get them safely out of the house. I'm just telling you. Um, I see it's bottled at 55%. It, it is. was delicious. I remember that was one too as soon as we as soon as we opened up those samples. It was our first live stream. That smells delicious. And I, I was just, just like yeah, I was just like, right, I was blown on, away by that one. we got to share our number one. Let me have um, a sip of your number one. You have a sip of mine. Okay, this is the Ardbeg Dark Wow. Coat. Wow, oh, your I berries. Hate to, it's going <laughs> to destroy well, me. Well, I can finish this for you if you want. Mm. Berry explosion going on over here. I got a nice roasted, salted mm. barbecue, or like a smoked pork as it was coming into my mouth. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> as it was leaving the glass mm. there you go mm. Mm. yeah you probably you're gonna lose a lot but delicious the nose on that's unbelievable yeah. you're right my the peat's been taking over my palate still delicious mm -hmm. subtle refined top notch so l let me see if i got this straight Three of your top five NASs are art from Art Bay. Blew me away, and, and I had the Lefroigs out there, all right, because I have some quarter. Not only do I have the lore, do I still have the select up there? I don't think so. I've got the triple wood. I've got the uh, the quarter cask. I've got the card carches, mm -hmm. um, hmm. and that's why I I couldn't. I got very excited thinking about a. I don't know if we can get a 16 bottle. Either way, that's out. last of the Deanston okay. virgin oak. The nose on this is unbelievable. I can't wait. I'm, I'm picturing a 12 bottle peated shootout where we're only doing three, but we may even have to extend it to where we're only doing two at a sitting. Yeah. I know. Just to give them fair representation. Yeah. Um, That'd be tough. But it, we definitely got to do the sherry next, but I think if we do the sherry scotches and then the peated scotches, oh my. Oh my, the nose on this Deanston is so, so impressive. My goodness, I could nose this all day long. I get that, that sweet <laughs> sourdough bread that is just delicious. All right, let's move. We're not, we're not wow. reviewing it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's just, it's wonderful for its price. I need to get, like get more of this. I, I think my five were pretty good picks. Mm. You had five good picks. There's a mm. lot. That's just to show you, there's a lot of non-age statement oh whiskeys out there that are phenomenal. Well, it's funny. When we started the sh when we started our show, NASs was the hot topic. And there was a lot of vitriol. A lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, what? What are they doing? And then... Some of the releases came out and people were pissed because they were like, that's crap whiskey. No wonder. Look at these bad NAS. And then they would have the occasional great NAS come out and they would be like, oh, oh, oh my God, you can do this? Yeah. I actually have said multiple times, keep bringing the NASs. I think it helps our show because we try it and we go, oh my God, that Deanston at that price point. Oh, this committee release, which is hard to get, but worth the money. I mean... I think that's where our show brings value to the to the watcher, to the viewer. Yeah. Um, I also, like I told you the other day, I don't think there are distilleries out there that intentionally go, that's a crap whiskey, mm -mm. let's put it out there. Mm -mm. It's a direct reflection on the distillery and the uh, master distiller, you know, the blender, whoever's involved. It, it reflects on all of them. I don't think there's anybody that says, 
Just push it out. No, it, no, it's no. It's not good. Do I it. think the whiskeys are really at this high standard level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What we are rating, when, when I think almost every whiskey we try is at this high, the bar set high. Yeah. The problem, not the problem, the beautiful thing is there's these ones that are a cut above, mm -hmm. a notch above. The good. distillers themselves will have a product where like, this is good. This is, this is great. And then every once in a while, they'll try something that's special and they'll go oh my god and what they're able to do with these nas's which is what i agree 100 percent just oh this is 12 years send it hmm. no 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 they may taste something and go oh my god this is only six years old this is only seven this is nine it's bottle time this is beautiful this is great if we keep it in any longer, it actually may turn into something that's over oaked or too strong and they'll bottle it. And some people go, ah, it doesn't have a 12 on it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Unbelievable goodness out there in the NAS world. And they're making their money off of it and tells you all you really need to know. Are you ready to wrap? Let's wrap. I could talk. I know. Scotch it. You NAS Scotch gods! Salancha NAS dummies. <sighs>